Hello everyone. So in the previous video we discussed about uh, the ionic uh, bonding and in today's video we will be concentrating on uh, the covalent bonding. So if we look uh, at if you remember what we discussed in the previous video about the ionic substances we know few of the common substances that we come across in our daily life is uh, the common salt that is NaCl and uh, uh, certain mineral acids. Uh, so these are the common ionic substances that you come across and we know that from what we discussed the ionic substances are brittle in nature. They have a very high melting point and uh, they have a very extended lattice structure and possess uh, strong electrolytic behave, electrolyte behavior when dissolved in water and this property properties we are pretty aware of. However, the common substances that we come in our daily lives, come across in our daily lives like water, bags, plastics, sugar, rubber, they do not have these properties. They are pretty low, they pretty have low melting and boiling temperature and exhibit varied state of, man, uh, state of matter like water can exhibit uh, liquid state, gaseous state, vapor state and uh, solid state. Similarly, the other substances that we come across can show various state of matter at a very short temperature uh, range. Okay, they do not have a very high melting point or a very high boiling point, not, nothing like that. And uh, we do not find them to have any kind of uh, lattice structure. And uh, often some of the material are crystalline, but they do not have this lattice structure that you find in the ionic substances. And uh, uh, almost all of these materials do not possess uh, non-electrolyte. Uh, uh, they all uh, possess a non-electrolyte behavior when dissolved in water. So that means when you dissolve this substance in water, what you see is that they do not uh, dissociate into ions as you see in the case of uh, the ionic substances. So what is the nature of bonding? in these substances. So that is what we are going to uh, uh, try to understand uh, in this particular video. So Lewis was the first uh, who gave uh, idea about uh, what is happening in the bonding uh, in these kind of material is that he suggested what you now know as the covalent compounds. So basically what he suggested was that in covalent compounds the atoms are having uh, uh, atoms are joining together to each other on the basis of sharing of electrons okay and these are uh, when the sharing of electron happens the sharing pair of electrons they are responsible for what you called with what you now known as the covalent bonds or they are also called as covalent linkages okay so uh, 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 G and Lewis was the one who first suggested uh, this uh, criteria that uh, the atoms join together by sharing of electrons so that each of them attain a noble gas configuration and the shared pair of electron give rise to what you called as the covalent bond or the covalent linkages okay so he was the first who gave this particular concept now if we go further into the uh, way he represented uh, these covalent bonding uh, that was using a particular uh, way of representation which was developed by himself. Here it was known as the Lewis structure or it's sometimes also called as Lewis dot structure because it rep it, ha it represents uh, symbols as well as <coughs> dots in, uh, in order to represent the uh, covalent bonding. So here it, let's look at a very simple example. So this is a hydrogen atom. Okay. So the Lewis symbol for hydrogen atom is nothing but your hydrogen plus uh, the valence electron that is one in the case of hydrogen. So when we consider the formation of a hydrogen molecule, we actually consider the joining together of uh, the two hydrogen to form a H2 molecule. So how he showed that? So basically he showed that when you uh, when these two atoms react they kind of share these electrons with each other so that uh, uh, this hydrogen if we talk about the hydrogen on the left hand side this is having how many electrons two electrons now and this 
hydrogen which is on the RHS is now having another uh, two electrons. So it has attained a noble helium gas configuration. So uh, initially when it started with it didn't have a noble gas configuration it was 1s1 but when it formed a molecule it attained a noble gas configuration by sharing these electrons with each other and this shared pair of electron that you see here is actually responsible for the covalent bond or this is this linkage that is formed as a result of sharing of electron these shared pair of electron is what you uh, call it as a covalent uh, bonding okay so uh, this circle in lewis symbols actually represent uh, the electrons shared by each atom so this hydrogen is now sharing with the other hydrogen so that it has now a noble helium gas configuration so this circle represent the sharing of electrons uh, often time you will see some of the textbooks give these circles some of them doesn't give this uh, structure now here another example of chlorine molecule so uh, this is a lewis symbol for chlorine atom so we know chlorine atom is surrounded by seven um, electrons uh, so uh, therefore we denote the lewis symbol something like this so you have to remember that uh, when you write the lewis symbol you always uh, pair up the electrons while writing on the four sides of the atom and this is an odd electron which we cannot we do not have uh, if we had eight electron we could have paired it but since the chlorine atom is having only seven electron it remains as an odd electron okay so when these uh, two chlorine atoms combine uh, they share with each other one one electron so that it has now uh, a, a, a kind of noble gas configuration right so it has its complete octate okay so each of the chlorine atom by sharing one electron each it has completed its octet so this is responsible this shared pair of electron is responsible for your covalent bond or it's also called as covalent linkage so this is one way of representing the lewis structure more conventional approach of writing the structure is that uh, the shared pair of electron that you see here which is actually responsible for the covalent bonding we often represent them as a line okay so you can represent them as a line so you have now hydrogen attached with a line this line shows a pair of electron and uh, indirectly it shows the covalent bond between the two hydrogen atoms when it comes to chlorine again that shared pair of electron responsible for one covalent bond between the two chlorine atom is represented by a line and the remaining non-bonding electrons are shown as dots around the respective atoms. This is the more conventional way of writing the Lewis structure. This, this also uh, you can see in some of the textbooks being used or in your NCRT textbooks you might have seen uh, use of this symbol. Uh, this is more conventional, more easy and friendly way of writing the Lewis structure and uh, these days like uh, it is more easiest and convenient to write it because often uh, when we have uh, polyatomic atoms if we write too many electrons we get sometimes confused with the structures and we often confuse the bond with the uh, uh, non-bonded electrons so a lot of confusion can arise so that's why this is a more conventional way of writing the Lewis structure where you write the shared pair of electron as a line bond now here at this point i would like to introduce another uh, terminology and that is called covalency so what is covalency is the number of bonds an atom can form within a molecule uh, is known as its covalency so for example if you consider this particular molecule that is chlorine molecule this chlorine is able to form how many bonds one bond and therefore this chlorine's covalency would be one okay similarly this hydrogen can form how many uh, is forming how many bonds here one bond and therefore its covalency is um, one and uh, if we consider oxygen here oxygen uh, one compound is h2 so if you remember oxygen is at the center and hydrogens are attached to it so it forms two bonds so covalency of oxygen therefore is two okay so just remember this covalency term so it is the number of bond an atom can form within a molecule uh, gives 
uh, that atom its particular covalency. So just remember this particular term and let's move further. So now I showed you just now the Lewis structure. So it's important that we should now understand how uh, we are going to draw the Lewis structure. These things you might have already studied in your uh, uh, smaller classes. So I'm just going to uh, sum it out all the things that are there and the rules how to write them. First rule is that uh, initially you have to count the number of valence electrons from all the atoms taking into account the overall charge. So if your molecule is charged you have to take into account that charge. If it's negatively charged you have to add that many electrons. If it's positively charged you have to subtract that many electrons. Then the second step would be uh, writing the symbol of the atom and show which atom are attached to which and connect them using single bond. So next uh, next thing is you should know a brief structure about uh, that uh, molecule so that you can connect these uh, molecules with the uh, with one single bond. And thereafter what you do is you complete the octet by arranging the remaining pair of valence electron around the atoms other than the central atom. Okay. After that, you will place the any remaining electron on the central atom, even if it exceeds the octet of the central atom. And uh, if there are not enough electrons, sometimes it happens that the central atom, after giving all the valence electrons, still isn't octet. In that case, uh, we have to form multiple bonds by bringing the non-bonded electrons from the outer uh, outer atoms into forming a bond and leading to what you call as multiple bonds okay this you will understand probably when we are going to do the examples that are listed in your syllabus and we are going to practice them okay then you will try to understand how uh, this lewis dot structure is done and many of you are pretty much very much uh, well versed in drawing these structures now lewis structure is a kind of uh, uh, way of representing the formula of the covalent compound but it doesn't talk about the shape of the molecules from Lewis structure we can understand how the atoms are connected to each other but it doesn't talk about the shape of the molecule now what are all the shapes of the molecule that are possible so if you know that uh, we have uh, almost like uh, five different shapes that uh, a molecule can adopt based on a central atom and surrounding uh, atoms like in the of the notation a b n so a b 2 a b 3 a b 4 a b 5 a b 6 so from these five structure we can deduce the shapes that a particular molecule especially in the organic chemistry can attain so you can have a linear geometry we can have a trigonal planar geometry we can have a tetrahedral geometry we can have a trigonal bipyramidal geometry and you can also have a octahedral geometry now lewis structure doesn't solve the problem of shape so we need another theory to uh, know about the shape of the molecule so uh, we came across a theory called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory which is also called as vsepr theory so basically what we do in this particular theory is that uh, we once we know the lewis structure we will consider how many pairs of electrons are surrounding uh, these central atom and these pairs of electron that is surrounding the central atom uh, would be count uh, would be called as the electron domain okay so once we know the number of uh, electron domains that are surrounding a particular central atom we can quickly decide uh, the the shape of the uh, electron uh, pretty easily uh, we can determine the shape of the molecule pretty easily. Okay, so uh, this we are going to practice and see how that is done by taking up the examples. Okay, so for example, if we have two pairs of electrons surrounding the atom, we will have the shape as linear 3, it would be called as trigonal planar. If we have 4, it would be called as tetrahedral. If we have 5, we will call it as trigonal planar. And if we have 6, uh, pairs of electron surrounding the uh, central atom we will call it as the octahedral uh, shape okay 
So we'll uh, practice the uh, this particular uh, writing of the Lewis structure, then we will understand it pretty well.